In warehouses, boxes get lifted up and down a lot, which is usually done by a forklift. A forklift has a maximum load it can handle, so you need to know the force acting on the fork. As an example, assume that you want to lift two heavy boxes with a forklift. The lower box A has a mass of 150 kilograms, and the upper box B has a mass of 100 kilograms. Part A of the question asks, what is the magnitude of the force that the forklift exerts on the lower box A while the boxes are moving up at constant speed? So before jumping into answering the question, what I've done here is a little bit of question analysis. And what I mean by that is that I've taken all the information from the question and condensed it into this table. And this table is a bigger outer box that includes all the information from the main part of the question here. And that's basically information that's universal to the question, so it doesn't just belong to a single part of the question. And then I have one smaller box here for assumptions, and then I have two boxes, one for part A and one for part B. So from the main part, we only have that box A has a mass of 150, and the upper box has a mass of 100 kilograms. And from part A, we have that we want to find the magnitude of the force of the forklift on the lower box A. So I've represented that by the F of lift on A and put question marks in front of it. And then it also also says that the boxes are moving up at constant speed. So basically it's telling me that it has constant speed, but then it's moving up and that implies that there is constant direction. And from that, I know that the velocity is constant and that implies that the acceleration is zero meters per second squared. Now, I know that I'm looking for the force of lift on A, so a good approach would be to draw the free body diagram for A and then try to solve the question from there. Remember that a free body diagram shows the relative magnitude and direction of all the forces on an object. Now, based on this definition, pause the video and answer this question. The answer to the question is D. Now let's see why. Now let's draw the free body diagram for A. From this diagram here, we can see that there are two objects in contact with A. There is box B and there is also the lift. And we know that whenever there are objects in contact with A, then there have to be contact forces, which in the questions that you normally encounter, they're either a normal force or a friction force. In this case, the forces are normal forces because the force of box B and the lift aren't opposing the motion of A, so it can't be a friction force. And since they are normal forces, we know that they have to be perpendicular to the point of contact and pointing away from the object that's exerting the force. So in this case, the force of the lift has to be pointing away from the lift, so upwards. And the force of B then has to be pointing downwards. We of course need an arrow pointing downwards as well for the weight of A, or in other words, the force of Earth on A. So now based on the free body diagram that we've drawn here, we can see that A is wrong because it doesn't have the weight of A, and B is also wrong because it doesn't have the force of B on A, and C is incorrect because it has an arrow for the weight of B, which is basically the force of Earth on B, and whenever we are drawing free body diagrams, we should only include those forces that are being applied applied on the object. Weight of B is being applied on B and not A, so it shouldn't be in this diagram, so C is also not right. Now both D and E have all the forces that we have in our free body diagram, but the length of these forces are different. Now if you remember from our question analysis, we had that the acceleration of A and B is zero which based on Newton's second law, which says F net is equal to MA, that means that since acceleration is zero, then F net is also zero. 
So in our free body diagram, the sum of the length of all the arrows pointing down should be roughly the same as the sum of the length of arrows pointing up so that the F net is zero. And that's only true for D since if you put this on top of this one, you get an arrow that's about the same length as the F of lift on A. So E is also incorrect. Now I can write an equation for the vector f net of A by just adding all of these three forces that are being applied by A. And then to calculate this equation, I just have to convert all of these vectors to scalars by assigning negative and positive to them based on their direction. So what I'm going to do here is say that up is positive, down negative. In fact, I'm going to put this in the assumption part of our information box. For F net, if you remember, when we were drawing the free body diagram, we realized that the F net was just zero because the acceleration was zero. And uh, F of lift on A is pointing up, so it will be positive. And the weight of A is pointing down, so it will be negative. And finally, f of b on a is also pointing down, so it'll be negative. And we also know that the equation for weight is just m times acceleration due to gravity, so we can calculate that. But we don't have an equation for f of b on a, and we need to find this first before we go on to figuring out what the f of lift is. Well, we don't have an equation for f of b on a, but what we do know about it is that it is a contact force because b and a are interacting with each other. And with interacting bodies, we know that Newton's third law says in every interaction there is a pair of forces each acting on one of the interacting objects such that the forces are of equal magnitude but in opposite direction. So that means that there has to be an F of A on B that has equal magnitude to F of B on A but is pointing in the opposite direction. And so if I can draw the free body diagram for B and find the magnitude of F of A on B, then I can find the magnitude of F of B on A and then calculate the F of lift on A. So box B is only in contact with box A, and so there's only one contact force, which is a normal force, and that is the force of A on B here, which has to be pointing upwards and perpendicular to the point of contact. And there's, of course, an arrow for the weight of B, which is pointing downwards. Now, based on this free body diagram, we can write the equation for the vector F net of B which is going to be the sum of all the forces that are being applied on B. And to calculate this, I have to convert it to scalars. And F net of B, if you remember, is just zero because we had that this acceleration is zero. F of A on B, that's pointing upwards. And in our assumption, we had that up is positive and down is negative. So this is just going to be positive F of A on B, and the weight is pointing downwards, so it's going to be negative. The equation for W is mg, and we had that the mass of the upper box is 100 kilograms, so this is going to be negative 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 980 newtons, and so F of A on B is 980 newtons. So since F of A on B is 980 newtons, then F of B on A is also 980 newtons. And we know that the mass of A is 150 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared minus 980 
which is then 1,470 minus 980. So f of lith on A is the sum of those, which is 2,450 newtons. Now, there is a much quicker method of solving this question, and I have a video on that as well, but I wanted to go over this more systematic way of solving the question so that we can cover topics like Newton's third law and drawing more complicated free body diagrams, which will be useful in the second part of the question as well.